So I've just been building the fence and uh, as I mentioned in the last vlog, it is mushroom season. So we have all kinds of fungi and mushrooms growing around here. You just have to be careful you pick the right ones and you know what you're, what you're picking. I have many, many, many years experience with mushrooms um, of all varieties. And in fact, I've grown them under laboratory conditions too. So let's go and see what we've got here and uh, are they the delicious variety? So here we go, we have some delicious mushrooms all popping up around here. In Thai they call these uh, het pluak. So basically you just, just pick them up, but you don't want to damage the mycelium underneath because mushrooms come in flushes. The mushroom is actually the sexual organ. Uh, you're only seeing the top, but the actual uh, organism is all the way under the ground, is the mycelium. If we, if we just break this off here, it's better than pulling the whole thing out. Because if you pull the whole thing out, you'll never get your second flush from the mycelium. You'll damage the mycelium. Whereas if you just pull it out here, we come back maybe in a couple of weeks and you're going to get a brand new flush. So, and that can happen two, three, four times, if not more. So just break it off just the stem there. Don't damage the, uh, the mycelium cake underneath. Home fire burning while I'm Beautiful. Breakfast. I sure hope you love this too. I never gave you cause to doubt. So the English name for this one is actually uh, Termitomyces, um, the Termitomyces mushroom, or, or colloquial speech is more the termite mushroom. Uh, some of the, I mean, there's a wide variety of these actually, uh, only some of them are edible. It's 98% water, this one here. So, and I know this one is edible, uh, perfectly edible. And uh, I think we'll fry some up now and, and have a little taste. Now, if you, if you really want to check that the mushroom is safe to eat and it's not poisonous, uh, the best thing to do is give it to your wife or child first, and if uh, if they survive, then it's good. It's good to eat. Um, that is the professional way to <laughs> to uh, yeah to to really test uh, the safety of the mushroom. <laughs> All right, so there are many different ways you can prepare these mushrooms. You can roast them, saute them, you cook them in the oven. Uh, not sure about eating them raw, not really my cup of tea. I think there are certain things that you have to cook off on some mushrooms. So, but for me, I just like to fry them in a little bit of uh, oil. So I'm gonna be using a little bit of coconut oil. Just not, not too much and not too much seasoning or anything like that because I'm taking away the taste of the mushroom. So just throw them in here and uh, fry them up. I'm going to save some of those for later in the fridge, I think. Um, and just slow fry them. Don't move them around a lot. Uh, three to five minutes in, in one position, three to five minutes in another. Really, you want to try and keep it on a medium heat. Um, not, too, not too hot. And what we're really trying to do is get the flavor of the mushroom. If you're going to eat wild mushrooms, there's no point in seasoning them with loads of paprika or some kind of strong herb because you're going to take away that the whole taste, the whole point of having these. And these only come around once every year, so it's a real delicacy. I've been told in Thailand these mushrooms sell for about 200 baht per kilo, which is uh, actually quite expensive if you compare it with other mushrooms. So because they're only coming around once a year. So now we have the luxury of a kitchen to do this as well. This heat, I can tell already, is still a bit too hot. So. Now, out of one of the mushrooms, you may be able to see there, uh, one of the mushrooms, there's come some ants. So, <laughs> nice little bit of protein in there with your fried mushrooms. 
but things must have been heating up there in, inside the mushroom and the ants have come out. Uh, there is a reason why they call this the termite mush, uh, mushroom. These little critters can live in there, but uh, hopefully they've already evacuated. And in Thailand, they eat ants. Ants are a delicacy, so I, I'm not worried. I wouldn't eat all the eggs though that we eat. You know, they eat all those eggs and stuff. No, that's not my cup of tea. The red ants. And I probably will separate these out. There you go. So that heats better. This isn't, so the oil's not jumping out of the pan. Uh, it's just that nice medium heat. Separate out these little fritters. These are wild mushrooms. Literally, got the, the wild in them. Mm. These have got a lovely meaty smell coming off it. Like the best description I can give for those in England that know bovril, which is like a, a beef drink. That's the smell that's coming off this. Really beefy and uh, pungent odor from these mushrooms. I can tell they're gonna be delicious already. Mm. Okay, so the termite mushroom. Let me, uh, there she is. It's nice to put a little bit of kitchen roll or something just to take the oil off and get that full flavor. Really deep taste, pungent, strong taste. Really hits the back of your throat as soon as you, as soon as you have it. Like this beefy, really beefy taste is the best way I can describe it. You know, like your normal white button mushroom like that. You take one of those, times it by 20 for the mushroom taste. And that's what you get from these wild mushrooms. A real treat. Let's hope they keep popping up and we'll have them for breakfast every day. Right, give that a try. You like it? Hold on a minute. You can't eat those. They're the poisonous ones. Oh no, I've made a mistake. I know. <laughs> I know what poison is, what's not. Right, you eat them all, yeah? I'll cook some more then. <laughs> think, Tiss. What do you think about those mushrooms? Huh? Okay, so as we previously mentioned, with this high humidity, um, we're having a problem with the roof. And like I said on this channel, I want to mention the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I think not everything is perfect. Things go wrong. We make mistakes. That's that's life. Uh, we're all a human. Um, so what is happening with the roof is we're getting this kind of mold buildup. And yes, it can be treated with bleach, um, a bleach solution, but it won't take it all off. And we are concerned that it's getting to kind of an unhealthy level. Now, the inside and the hot tub area isn't really affected. It's very strange. It's the outdoor area around the sides. And so um, we had treated it with an antifungal and an anti-termite um, uh, chemical, and we'd varnished it with a wood varnish, but even that hasn't been enough to battle this. Now we contacted the professional that builds the bamboo hut out of this, and he says he cleans it with benzene. But well, that's not something that I really want to get up and start doing. So what have we decided to do? We pulled the trigger. We're going to have it replaced on the outside. All right. So the inside we're going to keep the same, but the outside area, the bits that are damaged, as you can see here, um, they were going to be removed, and we're going to put up a smart board, which is the more kind of the usual material that you would use for a roof. So anybody following what we're doing here, we hope this is helpful to you. Um, don't just uh, put it on for sure. I mean, it needs to be treated. And this time of year, you're gonna have this problem. Now, what we're told is every year, this problem gets less and less because there's less kind of fresh new material for the mold to eat. So eventually it goes away, but it can stain uh, the final result. We wanna try this smart board, see how it is. And if it, if it works for us, we may have the whole roof replaced in it, or we may keep this bamboo for one season, one year, and then replace it in, in the future. But we're gonna have like a bit of a mixed approach and see how we go. You're gonna be safer with SmartBoard. 
uh, that is the traditional material used. So yeah, we're keeping you updated and, uh, and we're fixing the problem. The cost for the outside to be replaced has been uh, 1,600 baht for the smart board and 2,000 baht for them to actually do it. So 3,600 baht uh, all, for all of the outside uh, roof to be replaced. <laughs>
Also Ram Das, uh, formerly Richard Alpert, who wrote The Psychedelic Experience with Timothy O'Leary uh, back in the 70s. Um, and also uh, thinkers, writers like Alan Watts um, and Terence McKenna. These people have been massively influential in my life and they've helped me really focus on, well, the present moment and being in the present moment and the knowing of who we are at the deepest level um, and focusing on the simple things like being a dad, like staying kind of calm with my ego in check as best as possible, uh, possibly can, uh, staying unaddicted and as free as I possibly can in order to be the best dad that I can possibly be. And I'm not saying I am a fantastic dad, but um, and there's always room for improvement in everything that we do. Uh, but that's something that I'm working on all the time, working on myself with. And, um, and yeah, that, that's difficult for some people. So if you're going through kind of addiction or a crazy moment in your life where you're feeling anxious or deeply depressed or um, having those kind of issues, I really recommend those. Uh, you can find on YouTube those thinkers, writers, speakers, um, to really give insight into who we really are at our deepest level and um, what techniques are available to us in order to find some centeredness, in order to find uh, that place within us where there's kind of calm and peace and joy uh, and tranquility um, in this world as it is at the moment. Uh, it's very difficult to find. A lot of people are going through a lot of crap at the moment. Uh, but to, <laughs> to find that spiritual center has been the most important thing uh, in my life. And I still class it as my most important asset, as it were, a bit of a strange way to describe it, but um, that spiritual centeredness is the most important thing in the world to me because it allows me then to operate uh, to a degree of kind of freedom and joy and centeredness that makes, um, makes it easier for me to be a better a dad and uh, make decisions that are productive in life rather than destructive. Whereas formerly as a, as a former alcoholic, most of my decisions were quite destructive to relationships with people around me, um, to my businesses, to uh, my health and, and life in general. And uh, so those thinkers, authors, along with a good practice, um, shamanic practice or yogic practice, are going to help uh, find that centeredness and, and give life a new, um, you know, a, a stability and, um, and a, and a health-centered focus. So there's my rant on that. It's funny because I started the channel for that reason, to talk about this, and I very rarely get time to talk about it because I'm filming our life, and yet it is the most important part of our life. Uh, I think Damo would agree too. So uh, thanks for listening to the rant.